Hello guys, welcome to the channel, hope you're all well. In today's video, I'm going to be previewing the Phoenix Suns versus the Los Angeles Clippers. I'm going to start with the Suns side of things, talk about the Clippers for a bit, and then give you my prediction at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's get started. The Phoenix Suns have won 21 of their first 25 games, which included a rather long win streak. Now, they are currently the best team in the West now in terms of winning percentage because the Golden State Warriors did lose to the Philadelphia 76ers. So that's another little thing for the Suns, who are on a two-game winning streak you know, after their 19-game winning streak was quashed. They're coming off of an impressive win against the Celtics where they won by 21 points, 111-90. to JaVale McGee got the starting role in the absence of DeAndre Ayton, who is out with non-COVID illness. Uh, you know, uh, he didn't play, and along with Devin Booker as well. Chris Paul had 12 assists as well, helping you know in every way he can as a savvy veteran. Uh, they were always up in this game, and it didn't look like they were going to lose. And like many things for this team, the defense translated very, very well. Now, they're going to be without Devin Booker for this game for sure. DeAndre Ayton might come back, and Abdel Nader is not going to be returning alongside Frank Kaminsky. Now, I guess... If Aiden plays, it helps their case in this matchup. But as you'll see when I talk about the Clippers, they're not exactly the most healthy team at the moment either. Now, just a quick break. I make NBA content two to three times a week. So I'd heavily appreciate it if you guys subscribed. And if not, please like the video and also comment because that would help me out a lot as well. Let's continue. Devin Booker is a bad you know, absence for them to have. He's still struggling with that hamstring injury that he suffered against the Warriors. Uh, DeAndre Ayton would be another key loss as well is he's, he's giving them a 16 point double double and a lot of rim protection but guys that are playing we, well, we know will play like Chris Paul's been really good for them this season as well a few people concerned about how he's going to carry on through to this season as he gets another year older as of now he's fine let's hope that he can stay healthy for the majority of the postseason he's averaging uh yeah 14.10 uh, assist uh per game for this season uh, Mikael Bridges has been great on defense for them. You probably want to see him score a bit more points, but he's averaging 12 and 4. And then JaVale had a very impressive game the other night as well. But just going to talk a bit more about the team overall. They currently have the 8th best offense in the league. Uh, you know, probably a bit skewed negatively because they've missed out on Booker for a few games now. Because it's only, it's only early in the year, so I guess less data, less games, so it kind of impacts it more. When he comes back, I expect to see them rise quite a bit. And then on defense, something which Monty Williams has made a big point of these last two or well, one and a half, two years now. Uh, you know, they're second in the league, behind the Golden State Warriors, 103.6 defensive rating, above every good defensive team like the Jazz, Bucks, Bulls, and Heat. So they've been very good, uh, very impressive and it's good to see they're still hanging around after many people, including myself, <laughs> were rather doubtful of it. Now, as you can see, I've got Paul George um, lumping up some, some shots. I'm going to talk about the Clippers for a bit before I give my prediction. So they're 15 and 12 through their first 27, and they've won three games on the trot uh, as of late. They were without Paul George, so alluding to what I was saying before. They were without Paul George in this game. Uh, he had, is suffering with his elbow a bit. Uh, they won by two. Uh, Reggie Jackson stepped up in a big, big way on offense with 25 points. Luke Kennard also put in 23 to help them out and get the win 106 to 104 against probably metric wise the worst team in the league, the Orlando Magic. So th their chances of winning this game against the Suns completely depends on if Paul George comes back. He's a guy that can create offense for himself, a bit for his teammates, and also defend at an elite level. Uh, then Batum as well as another guy that's out on a day-to-day -day basis and would probably be a game-time decision. Now, Reggie Jackson, as I was saying before, he, he's been pretty good this season, averaging 17.5 points and 4 assists, filling some of that scoring void, obviously, with Kawhi Leonard not playing it up to this point as he's still recovering from his knee injury. Uh, Marcus Morris Senior has averaged 12 points and 4 boards. Kennard as well was, is pretty good on, on offense, helping them out. Defensively, there's always been doubts with him, but on offense, 11 points is pretty handy for this team, as they, again, they are looking to fill the void left by Kawhi Leonard. But I guess I'm a bit disappointed with Eric Bledsoe, but in the same breath, he hasn't really gotten too many minutes. And it's just a shame to see how he's fallen off since the Milwaukee days, and, you know, after he was traded for Drew Holiday. But at least he's finding a bit of a role in this team and 
he's had some big games this season to help them, you know, win games and stay competitive. As a team, they've been pretty poor on offense, which is a common theme when you're missing your best player on that end. Uh, they're going to not be good, so they're 25th best in the league, 106.1 offensive rating. Uh, only above teams like the Thunder, Pistons, Magic, Rockets, and Pelicans, all basement dwellers of the NBA in terms of the league-wide standings. However, what's kept them in games and in uh, the playoff race has been their defense, which is fourth best in the league, uh, and they're only behind the Warriors, Suns, and surprisingly the Cavaliers, who have been pretty impressive as well. I did make a preview for their game against the Heat, so if you want to check that out, nice little plug for me there. But back to the Clippers. They're above the Nets, uh, Jazz, and other teams like the Bucks. So it's obviously their defense has been pretty good, and it's kept them competitive this season as they wait for their former MVP to return. Now for my prediction, I think the Suns are probably the better team overall, and it's likely that Paul George doesn't play, so that probably sways my thoughts. If he plays, then it changes everything. But that is going to be it. I think the Suns will win. Now that, that is it for the video, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Comment who you think will win, and until next time, Peace out. Thank you.